sitting at a traffic light, just left work, headed to the scout portion of the Wisconsin Map Reading Challenge. It's got a little bit flipped around and mixed up this year. So Garrett's not even going to be there while I'm there. Shane will be. And then the hunt got a little bit messed up too. Um, as far as I know, Shane and I are going to get there at the same time, but Garrett's going to be at a different time as well. So uh, my apologies, public apologies to Garrett. What a mess. So let's go see if we can some, find some deer. All right, well, I've just gotten to the campsite. Rented a campsite at a campground within like 20 minutes or so of where I'm going to be scouting in the morning. And because it's late, I just set up an air mattress in the back here of the car. I don't feel like getting out and setting up a tent. And so I'm rough, roughing it in the back of the car. I've done this before. So hopefully the air mattress will hold air. And now, in a moment, you're going to see me get ready to go out and go scouting. But first I'm going to sleep. That was not exactly the best night of sleep I've had. <laughs> I was up quite a bit. The air mattress was losing air, and I went to uh, give it some air around three, and the valve broke. Like, there's a two stage valve on this one. You push the valve in, and it stops the air, and then you, f you put a flap closed to double keep the air in. And when I went to pull it out, the inner mechanism snapped off inside. So um, I was like, okay, I just limp through the night with the mattress as it is, and not too awesome. But I'm gonna get up and get moving and make this a scouting day, baby. Woohoo! It's a little colder than I was expecting for uh, August. 40, 46 degrees this morning, folks. That's a nice morning. Waiting for Shane and some other truck pulled up. That'll make things interesting. That was interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Shane Simpson from Calling All Turkey. He's going to be joining us on the map reading challenge. Welcome to the map reading yep. challenge, my friend. Pleasure. Now, and we'll also say this, he's going to be the first person in the history of the map reading challenge who's not going to wear a map reading challenge hat, <laughs> but it's a twofold reason. One is his daughter will not allow it. Yeah. Uh, but, she, the, but the other is because these are real tree camo and you're on the National Malcio Pro, 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 Pro Stuff. So, yeah. so folks, don't be offended when you see him out there without the map reading challenge <laughs> hat. Yeah, the, the main reason is my daughter <laughs> has seen me grow up with this little hooks hat. Yeah. And I mean, her entire life. And one day I swapped hats mm -hmm. to go somewhere, and she's like, no, 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 you got to take that hat no, off. Daddy. No, daddy. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty, this is pretty much my trademark mm -hmm. uh, look right go. now. Well, all right. Well, hey, man, good luck scouting today. Yeah. And we are looking forward to see what happens on the Map Reading Challenge. I'm going to just jump in here and just say I put this video together last night and it was way too long. I got too much footage. So here's what I'm going to do. The segment that I was originally putting in right here, I actually aired that on my map reading or my Sean's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I will provide a link for it. It is to the my top spot where I found the antler shed during the March Scout. So there's a nice segment about 15 minutes long. If you want to check that out, that's going to probably be my first stop on this hunt is that spot. And then there's a secondary spot I found while I was doing that segment that will be my second top pick. So now I'm gonna roll into some of the rest of the scout. First, I'm gonna finish this. If you watched the March Scout, which I also aired on the Sean's Outdoor Adventures channel, I found an area that was like loaded with deer sign and scat and everything. That's gonna be spot number two. I'm gonna jump over to that in a, in a little bit. Let's just pick up with the action right here. And in fact, the main trail, it comes right here and you can see there's even like um, a cut in the ground right here just from all the years of use right here where the deer go right through down into the swamp. And um, this is a nice open area, like I could shoot pretty far in here and see pretty far in here. So this is a nice little vantage point. I marked 
this tree right here for a climber and um, I just was walking away from the base of the tree and saw there's a nice pile of scat right here and this is a quantity so two things I look for when I'm looking at scat is quantity is nice but also the size of the pellets how big in diameter they are the larger the animal the more developed the organs are going to be you're going to have larger pellets so that to me looks like a good sized deer I would put it at least as a really mature doe. It could be a decent buck. Um, but then um, when I stepped away, there was, it looks like fawn scat right there. So then that would lead me to believe it's very possible that there was a doe and a fawn here. But I just wanted to mention that when you're looking at deer scat, um, you're more developed and older deer will have larger organs, so their scat you know, it's gonna, the balls of the, the pellets that they produce are going to be a little bit bigger than a younger deer. So sometimes you can get a, just a rough idea of the age of the deer based on the scat you're looking at. But I'm gonna keep this in mind. This is a nice little pocket right in here. It's opened up, I can do some shooting in here. That's one of the challenges you have in situations like this is having places where you can get shots off. I'll keep this in mind too, like if one of the other guys is having a little um, trouble with his spots, I could put them here. There's acorns on the ground and um, scat, so the deer are definitely utilized in this area. And it's only, you know, 40, 50 yards from that other tree, so it's definitely a good travel area and feeding area. I'm actually headed to another waypoint right now, away from that spot I was just at, and there is a beat trail that leads right to where I had that waypoint. Now, when I was here in March, I found a high density travel area that I marked and I wanted to go over to it. And it looks like this deer corridor is headed right that way. And that's just encouraging. I mean, this is a really beat run, beat down to the dirt. So you know it's getting a lot of use. And um, let's just head on over there and see what that looks like. Well, as soon as I turned the camera off, I came upon a scrape from last year, so there's where it was pawed out. And you can see the overhanging limb here has been nibbled off and, and broken. So you always look for the overhanging limb. And even the ferns right here, I haven't even stepped over this yet. The ferns are, are matted down from just the traffic going through here. Um, stepping on them, kind of pushing them down and stuff. So this is definitely a good travel corridor right here. And the thing that's really nice about that last tree I marked is, and there's some more deer scat right there. Um, not only is this a good travel corridor, but there's just feeding and bedding all through here. So it just brings it all together. You have topography working in your advantage. You have food, you have cover. It's just a really nice spot right here. More deer scat, a lot of deer sign. This is, this is a good spot. I might have to sit this. I might uh, keep that in mind for a good morning spot. Here's something else I want to point out. As you can see, these um, scat pellets are scattered and here they're clumped together. Uh, that doesn't indicate, you know, buck or doe, just in case you were wondering. It indicates what they're eating. This is this this deer where the pellets are scattered is, you know, whatever it's eating is a drier food and, you know, it's not causing the scat to, you know, stick together. So it's, it's just basically, it all depends on what they're eating. I want a major trail here. Looks like this area has been used as a scrape at times because the overhanging limb has been worked. And there's a rub right there, but it also looks like an area the deer actually bed in as well in other times of the year. There's a, a steep little slope right behind it. And a little bit, they can kind of see down this way. And then it gets thick down over farther and uh, it creates a good vantage point for the deer, a little flat spot and on a major travel corridor. Um, sometimes they will lay down right on a major trail like that. All right, so I have traveled, I have essentially followed that trail along the side of this ridge and there are scrapes all the way along it, which makes it a really good rut spot. I've marked this tree here. I could get up in this tree with a climber and it's on the side of the trail, like I would be approaching from an access area over that way. And the trail goes on the other side of this tree. 
There are better trees for getting in a climber in on the other side of the trail, but I don't want to walk across the trail. I try to never walk across a deer trail if I can get a setup without having to do that. And there's other deer trails that crisscross through here, so the deer travel can be good. Now, another thing that's really good about this spot where I just marked this tree is it's on a cover change, so it gets really thick right there. You can't even get it hunt in a tree stand over there. And then the woods open up right here where I'm at, and then over there it gets really thick again. So this is a little transition zone funnel type area and uh, it makes it a really good spot. Like if I don't score on a deer during the, the actual hunt when we come in September, this tree right here would be maybe my first stop on a rut hunt because it's back in the woods, it's thick in some of these areas and the deer will feel more comfortable cruising through here looking for does. And this could just be a really good rut spot. Going through the thicket now. It's clear cutted years ago. You just gotta basically plow your way through. There's a human footprint in the mud on this uh, old logging trail where I'm looking right now. So someone has been in here within the last probably couple few weeks, three, two, three weeks. And um, so that is noted when it comes to my plan, when I actually come hunt this spot, I'm seeing human sign in this area. If it's a hunter, you know, it could be pushing deer away from this spot so I could set up. I actually have a spot over from here that deer could get pushed to from here if someone was walking around over here. All right, so I'm pulling up to the second spot. And as I mentioned in the scout when I was here before, there's a lot of marked trees. They are logging right now at the second spot. That's where I walked in, I think. Somewhere right around here. <laughs> so yes, they are logging, I was correct. But that's, I mean, deer sometimes come in and nibble on the freshly cut branches, so. I'm gonna walk in and take a look around anyway. All right, so there's one of the logging trucks. The other one's over beyond it in the woods back over there. And um, when I was here in March, I noted that there was trees that were painted. And I said, you know, that's important to notice because sometimes that indicates they're gonna be doing some logging. And um, in fact, they are. I'm glad that I got up here to see that. Now the extent of logging that they're gonna do, that I, I can't predict, but I need to keep that in consideration when it comes to my strategy coming in here. Um, <clears throat> but just because they're logging doesn't mean you don't, doesn't mean to give up on a spot because, um, well, you know, like I mentioned a minute ago, the deer will come in and feed on the, the treetops that are freshly cut. So they're not afraid of the equipment running. They're used to uh, bulldozers, tractors. Well, I mean, there's no agriculture out here, but still I think that the deer get accustomed to those types of machinery, um, stuff like that. So uh, it's still, this is still gonna be, I think a good spot come the fall. <clears throat> All right, when I was here in March, um, this logging road that I'm currently on was here, you know, this was all grown over with grass. And I actually didn't know about this one that I'm currently walking on. I cut up through the woods and came across it as I came over the ridge top. So I'm actually walking it now because I had a spot on the ridge top that I really liked. The concern though is they really uh, redid this whole logging road all the way back through the woods. Currently they're logging down in the front, um, but the fact that they spent the time, money, and energy to redo this road, this logging road, could be bad news for me because uh, they could be in here logging all fall. I mean, they could be logging when I come back in September. And when I come back in September, all this right here could be logged off. I really don't know. So. Fortunately for me, and that's why you try to pick multiple spots when you're doing a, a distance hunt like this. If I try to come back here 
and this is all ripped up and they're working and it just all my key spots that I had picked out for here are gone then um, I'm gonna have to default back over to my other spot and hopefully it's far enough from here that they're not planning to do any logging on that but um, this could hurt me um, good information though for you you know for those of you who are thinking of doing a, a challenge hunt a distance hunt or, or even just scouting in general um, seeing this type of activity helps you make decisions or even be aware that things could be changed by the time the fall gets here I want to talk about deer tracks for a minute and typically a buck's track is spread in the front and a doe's comes together typically now you also have to look at a couple things like over here you could tell that this deer's hoof was sliding down in there um, sometimes when they're running it spreads the hoof apart so it could make a doe's hoof appear like a buck in the sense that it's spread apart so I mean just in general I look at that as long as the deer is walking at a normal pace like this this deer here you can see that it looks like it's spread there but then that one almost looks like it wants to come together and then there's um, some fawn tracks with it <clears throat> but one thing to look for though when you're looking at a deer track and you're trying to determine the age like this the deer's hoof slid a little bit but you can tell it's a young deer by how sharp the, the point is in the front of the hoof as they get older from kicking um, you know rocks and and branches and things on the ground it starts to wear out the front of the hoof and an older deer is going to have a rounded front of the hoof like this deer here is is round more rounded than than that one over there now another thing you could see there's that little kicker went into the ground there so you know that that hoof went sliding down into the dirt Just some things to look at when you're looking at deer tracks and trying to determine if it's a buck or a doe and the age. So here just came a couple steps over. This would be an example of a doe, you know, that comes together in the front. Typical doe. Here's one going in the opposite direction. Comes together in the front. And there's some fawn tracks with it. So there you have that. I'm going to keep going. All right, I just found this paperwork on the side of the logging road here. They must have dropped it. 24 acres, regeneration harvest of aspen. Harvest all trees except trees marked with green paint. Disregard old orange markings. So here you have it. This, this scaled sale is $12,298. And the bid was on November of last year. Folks, so that place ended up being a little bit of a disappointment with all the activity going on. The deer sign has reduced a lot since I was there in March. However, I am super excited to get back to Wisconsin because what I saw at the other spot really excited me. I think, I mean, not only do I have some good spots for going back for the actual hunt, but if I don't score and I want to go back to win the rut, this is going to be a key spot. So... Let's meet up with Shane and hear what he saw, a little bit of uh, input on what his channel's all about before we close out this video. So yeah, my, my channel is, uh, is originally started off with mostly turkey content. Yeah. And, and, um, and this past year I did like a daily vlog or, or you know, that type of deal where every day I was producing videos or every two or three days putting them together. So I have, um, I don't know, it's 33 days, maybe 20 some odd videos of turkey hunting and with public land and that sort of thing, running gun style. Uh, last year I started the Cali Chronicles where I'm uh, videoing um, all my deer tracking with my, my blue tick coon hound. And so you'll get to see aerial maps of you know, where the deer went and the stuff we have to the stuff we have to deal with and the stuff we see as a, as a tracker, a deer tracker. Um, it's, it's very interesting I think. Um, I, I, I mean I put it together but it's interesting to me to, to track and yeah. see these, these sort of things. Yeah. And so, and now I'm getting kind of more into uh, filming my deer hunts. I, I've done a little bit here and there, and I've got some on my channel, some public land deer hunting, but I'm kind of making a commitment this year to, to do more of that and be more committed. I, I, some, last few years I've gotten lazy about it, just gone out there and just enjoyed deer hunting. Yeah. But I, I enjoy looking back at hunts yeah. on video, and, and I kind of um, wish I'd taken the effort to do that yeah, more. Sure. So. Basically, my channel in a nutshell is turkey hunting public land, uh, tracking deer with a dog, 
and deer hunting on public land. There's some private land hunts mixed in, but for the most part, it's public land. Okay, hunting. cool. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Map Reading Challenge. I am excited to get back to Wisconsin, but first, it's off to Missouri for the Missouri Map Reading Challenge, the actual hunt. I hope you will stay tuned to find out what happens on all these hunts. Until then, take care and God bless. Keep us in your prayers.